Mulang Bonadi Dumalang, good evening and welcome to episode 210 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzaman Dunga Kumalo. It's a manic Monday. It's the 1st of March in 2021. I know many of us are feeling slightly wary as we are very fast approaching the one-year anniversary of us being in lockdown. This also, of course, means that we are approaching the one-year anniversary of the Private Property Podcast. If you remember, we first went on air on the 30th of March when we were deep into lockdown and, of course, kick-started the podcast with having a conversation with Uzak Mieza and Gil Sperling about how the la- how landlords as well as tenants should be approaching the 21-day lockdown and how having a very constructive conversation around, uh, you know, rental being paid or perhaps even making arrangements uh, around rental collection. Well, we're nearly one year into this new normal that I'm sure many of us are simply not getting used to. And we're still tackling hot property topics. I mean, we thought we were going to be in this for 21 days while it's nearly 365 days. And we've kept you company every single weekday at 7 p.m. here on the Private Property Podcast. And we're going to continue doing so, tackling various property topics that help us on our home ownership journey. And it doesn't matter whether you're a property investor, whether you're looking to buy, to sell, or perhaps you're a tenant and you want to better understand your rights and responsibility as a tenant, or perhaps you want to go from being a tenant to being an owner. We certainly do cater for all of your property needs. And if you're joining us for the first time, well, you have missed out on quite a great array of good content. So do make sure that you go back to our Facebook as well as our YouTube page to catch up on some of the great content that we've already brought to your screens. Now, to all our regular viewers, welcome back to the Private Property Podcast. You know how we do it. Every single weekday at 7 p.m., we tackle, you know, a property topic that best empowers us to ask the right questions and to make sure that we get a good deal uh, wherever it is, wherever we are on our home ownership or on our property journey. And of course, I love talking about the other great shows that we have across the private property social media platforms. I am talking about the farming podcast that you can look forward to tomorrow evening. It comes to your screens on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Umbali Noko brings you all that you want to find out about when it comes to all things agriculture. So if you've got green fingers or want to go into farming, then that is the podcast for you. Now to all our first time home buyers, we certainly have a show for you. The first time home buyers show with SD Classic comes to screens every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. And every Wednesday, she gets to have a conversation with somebody who's walked that first-time home buying journey. Uh, It's very daunting, uh, and it can be very, very intimidating. But of course, we all have to go through it if we want to be homeowners. And she has a really great conversation with people who've walked the path to reflect on some of the mistakes that they've made, some of the lessons that they've learned, and something that you and I can both learn a thing or two from. And even if you're not a first-time home buyer, It's always great to hear other people's home ownership stories and learn a little bit from them. And if you yourself have a great story to tell about your first time home buying experience, then do some first time home buying show uh, on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Well, you can also, of course, over the weekend, look forward to Chad bringing you the Home Shoppers show. That, of course, gives you a profile of some of the best complexes and estates that the country has on offer. Well, we certainly do have a lot on offer for you here on private property and of course across our social media platforms one of the things that we also have on offer as many of you know is of course the Sherlock Holmes competition we're now on week seven of the Sherlock Holmes competition and if you're finding out about it for the first time well all you have to do is to go on to www.privateproperty.co.za look at what the clue is we've posted a new clue this morning so every single Monday, we post a new clue. And this week's clue is actually, I think it's a difficult one. Uh, it probably just depends where you live or if you're, you know, you've been relatively good with these clues. This week's clue is in the sleepy hamlet of McGregor, the ideal family home awaits. With a garden made of vineyards, there's even an extra space for granny. That is the riddle for week seven of the Sherlock Holmes competition. When you go onto our website, let us know where you 
think it leads you, uh, do enter on our website and you stand a chance of walking away with a 5,000 Rand voucher every single Friday. And to keep things spicy and to make sure that we make the winner's circle even bigger, every Wednesdays and Thursdays we have a spot prize of 500 Rand in cash that you can win right here on the Private Property Podcast with myself, Zamandungwa Kumalo. And all you have to do in order to win that prize is to be watching us live because if we call your name you need to message us down here below and in order for you to claim your prize it's simply that simple to win on a private property and across our social media platforms now to get started with this evening's conversation one thing you're going to realize is that this week we're going to be talking a lot about sectional title communities and this is one of those things that i keep saying uh, every time we have a conversation about it is we're going to continue talking about it because so many of us are increasingly buying and moving into sectional title communities. Some people are renting into sectional title communities and really want to have a better understanding of what life in a sectional title community is like and, and really the whole eco chain, uh, an ecosystem of living in a sectional title community. Because I think so many of us are not particularly familiar with it, that by the time we're in, we end up struggling with it just a little bit. And this evening, what we're going to be looking at is an overview of the effects of the Poppy Act on sectional title schemes. Later on in the week, what you can also look forward to when we talk about sectional title community, we will be speaking to Zalinda Panamarbo, who is no stranger to the Private Property Podcast family, and we'll be looking at understanding the important role of a sectional title managing agent. So if you are living in a sectional title community and you still don't quite know what your managing agent does, that is the podcast you do not want to miss. And we're going to close off the, the week at, by looking at how struggling sectional title owners can achieve financial stability. We're going to give you tips on how you can better manage your finances when you live in a sectional title. We know so many uh, sometimes tend to struggle. Levies can be high, and that has a knock-on effect uh, when it comes to what can and cannot be done by the trustees as well as the managing agent. So those are some of the topics that you can look forward to this, this week when it comes to sectional title uh, communities. But this evening, we're looking at an overview of the effects of the Poppy Act on sectional title schemes. And some of what we'll explore is how the Poppy Act is applicable uh, when it comes to us living in sectional titled uh, communities, the importance of compliance, as well as how, uh, you know, voting corporates can begin to be compliant. Because one of the things that we're also seeing is that not all of them are compliant. So what does compliance A look like and B, how do we make sure that we are compliant? Now, to better help us understand how we can do this, another person who's no stranger to the private um, to the private property podcast team is Lee Ann Harrison, who's a portfolio manager at Camp Golding Property Management Services. Leanne, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Zama. Evening. How are you? I'm very good, Leanne. It's a Monday. I was saying it's been quite a manic one. I think, uh, you know, with so many people closing off financial year last week, we saw that I think this weekend it was still quite a big rush. Uh, and now we're starting, uh, you know, the final quarter of Q1, but also, of course, in the yeah. final yeah, so there's just a lot happening, um, but I'm sure, of course, we're going to get into you know, a topic that I know so many viewers at home want to get a better sense of, especially if they are living in uh, sectional title communities. And perhaps to a great starting point, um, Leanne, just briefly, what the Poppy Act, um, firstly, how it's applicable um, when we look at, you know, sectional title communities. And um, we've spoken briefly previously on the show around Poppy, but perhaps let's zone it down to how it's applicable for those of us who may buy into sectional title communities. Thanks, Emma. So over the last couple of days, I've been involved in a lot of conversations around sectional title and how Poppy is applicable. And it is applicable. So I've done just some research. I've looked at the Act. And, you know, first and foremost, in terms of the Constitution, everyone has a right to privacy. And that is why Poppy was enacted, to give effect to this right. Poppy um, places a duty on sectional title schemes to protect the personal information of the owners and their members that live in the, that own in the, the, in the scheme. Um, the importance of compliance, there's penalties that are now imposed in terms of Poppy. And when, when uh, they come into effect from the 1st of July, 
it is important that body corporates comply. So what I'd like to start off with is how, they are, how Poppy applies to body corporates. So the Act specifically says that any person, natural or juristic, who processes personal information has to comply with Poppy. Now, processing, it's, you know, quite a, a, a vague term, so I'd like to just break it down further what the word processing means. So processing means the collecting of information, the utilizing of it, the storing of the information, sharing it, and retaining it. So if I apply that to a body corporate, the collecting of information, body corporates collect information via the managing agent. If you're a new owner in a body corporate scheme, you submit your information to the managing agent to keep it and to utilize it, to share information with you, to send your levy statements to you, to communicate anything regarding uh, maintenance or otherwise in the community scheme. Uh, the managing agent on behalf of the body corporate stores information, whether it be in a filing cabinet, on a cloud database system, or on their computers. Um, the managing agent shares the information with other owners and residents. I'll give an example. If I'm living on the bottom floor and I've got a leak from above, I would need the information from the other owner above so that I can communicate with them and advise them that there's a leak and has to be repaired. So the body corporate shares information. And the last thing is we retain the information. So we keep it, we update it when necessary, when there's a change in ownership, we store it on our system. Um, so that is how Poppy is applicable to sectional title schemes. Mm -hmm. Personal information examples? Yes, sorry. No, you, you can continue. Because what I was actually about to ask is to almost broaden what compliance then looks like. Because you're talking yes. about you know, the importance of compliance. But I know yes. that you are getting there just now. Just better understand I'll, I'll do that. what we mean by compliance. So personal information would be your, your name, your ID number, your uh, physical address, um, your marital status, your contact details. So that's the information that the body corporate does collect. So when we talk about compliance, there's a few aspects that a body corporate needs to consider. And number one is Poppy created what's called an information regulator who oversees was like a watchdog for Poppy compliance. They require that every body corporate or sectional title scheme registers an information officer. It could be a trustee, it could be the chairperson of the trustees, it could be the, the building manager, the, the estate manager, it could even be a manage, the managing agent, although I don't recommend that because it's a massive risk that the, man, that the person takes on. Uh, breaking down compliance, you register yourself as an information officer and you then now start with how to comply. So... I've been dealing with, the, with uh, Zalinda, who you mentioned earlier, who's been assisting body corporates with uh, Poppy compliance. She's been helping drafting what's called a Poppy manual, which essentially is a document highlighting how the body corporate is, a, how, it's a, how Poppy is applicable to the body corporate, how they can comply, and what they are doing to comply as we speak. So if the information regulator had to come to the managing agent's office and, and ask, how is XYZ Body Corporate complying with Poppy? They can present the manual and show how they are complying. I know the manual, it's a piece of paper, but I do stress, want to stress the importance that body corporates via their managing agents must ensure compliance with the document. It can't just be a piece of paper that's, that's um, sitting on a desk somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, the information officer via the managing agent can then start with ensuring that the information collected is stored safely, there's adequate firewalls, etc., in place, um, and they must enforce the um, requirements strictly. I have a 
course, this in, in evening in conversation with Leanne Harrison, we're talking about an overview of the effects of the Puppy Act on sectional title schemes. And I know it's one of those conversations that uh, a lot of us might think, you know, it doesn't apply to us because somebody else who needs to ensure that we're compliant. But the reality, especially when we live in sectional title communities, is there's somebody who has all our information and oftentimes it is the managing agent uh, and the body corporate or the trustees rather not even the body corporate because we're all members of the body corporate but the trustees have access to some of this information as well so you want to make sure that the people who handle the very sensitive information uh, about yourself that could potentially if in the wrong hands could have damaging effects uh, for yourself sometimes even your finances I and mean, we've seen sometimes in cases uh, you know of identity theft being done uh, when some of our personal information isn't adequately stored or properly stored and really better understanding what body corporates or sectional title schemes uh, need to adequately do in order to ensure that by the time uh, they need to be compliant, they are in effect compliant. Now, Leanne, I mean, one of the big things that you're speaking about is, you know, the role of the information officer or the compliance officer. And as per your recommendation, you, you know, you recommend that ideally it shouldn't be somebody who is, uh, it shouldn't be the managing agent. You almost want to keep that slightly separate because it may, you know, help with um, making sure that there's a bit of accountability compliant. I mean, if we look at where uh, even those I know want to almost preemptively get themselves ready, um, how, how do you go about essentially doing so? So I think the first thing that someone has to do, a, a body corporate or a group of trustees, when they want to become compliant, they need to approach their managing agent and look at approaching a consultant like TVDM consultants who've been assisting, um, who have a grasp on the act already. You know, been, you know they've been um, researching for a few months now and sit down and do an anal analysis. Uh, the poppy manuals that um, TVDM are creating have a step-by-step -step breakdown of how a body corporate can become compliant. Then what they have to do is hand the information to somebody to draft this manual and once complete, and then I think it's, it's very important to do an audit of the managing agent's actual physical office see where the information is there, there that's being stored, whether it be on the computers, the filing cabinets. It's important that things are locked away. Uh, so it's a, it's a physical inspection, going to check. Are the computers being locked every night or um, shut down? Are the filing cabinets, um, are, they, are they locked with, a, with a, a, a key? Who has access to that information? Um, it's important that body corporates understand that non-compliance isn't just the paper it's written on. You can get a fine of up to 500,000 to a million rand. There is uh, penalties, um, there's imprisonment. Not to say that they would go that far, but it's important that they understand the severity of the non-compliance. Um, another aspect is how the information officer needs to continually ensure compliance. They need to check by annually, look at um, how information is being stored, how it's being destroyed, where is it being destroyed. They have to, in, they, they are the ones that will investigate any breaches. So if, for instance, uh, a whole stack of identity documents go missing, they are the ones accountable that have to make sure they know where the information went or was stored and what the potential reason was for the breach. It's very important mm. for a body corporate to sit down and analyze where the key aspects are, get someone to assist them who knows the act already because it's been out for quite a while, and start that process. Now, Leanne, I think when, when, when we look at, you know, what the Poppy Act says and ways in which uh, a lot of sectional title scheme communities can begin to get into a place where they're best positioned to be compliant, perhaps, you know, shed some light on what mistakes can they avoid um, as they almost work with their managing agent, put in and put in place a compliance uh, officer. What are some of the mistakes they should almost preemptively try to avoid uh, in order for them to sort of best manage yeah. the process uh, as much as possible? 
Look, number one, it's don't take it so lightly. It must be taken seriously because personal information is, is has been out there. And even as something as simple as, you know, I get a phone call from Telcom, want a contract. Someone has given my information to that person and they've taken my ID number or they've taken my cell phone number. So it's important that they don't make the mistake of doing something them, doing, the, doing it themselves. Trustees, not all of them are lay, are lay persons. Not, not everyone. They're professionals. Um, they work um, wherever they do. Rather, outsource it to someone that, that has the expertise that's knowledgeable on the, on the act. You know, someone like myself, I'm an attorney by profession. And funny example, interpretation of um, statute at varsity, I hated. And I realized now how important it is. And I, when I look at a piece of legislation, I can understand it better than somebody who is a financial manager for um, SAB. So it's important that they don't do it. Rather, get someone to assist them. It's a small fee to pay for a lifetime of compliance, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and, yeah. And, and, you know, Leanne, I actually wanted to ask you about, the, I'll say, the rise of, uh, let's call them consultants when it comes to working in, you know, border corporates. I know some are even able to be a trustee. You're able to you know, have somebody who's not necessarily an owner um, and essentially have almost a professional trustee, as it were, uh, yes. you know, pay them a fee. You know, are, do you see a rise of those kinds of services, especially as uh, when, you, when you look at the nature of the legislation um, around sectional title management, as you're saying, a lot of trustees typically don't have the know-how. There are more and more of us living in sectional title communities, more and more of us complaining about certain things. Uh, and so many things that sometimes, as we see new developments being built, some of the, you know, some of the units that we're moving into are relatively faulty. So even trying to mitigate some of those, um, you know, complaints, you find it ends up being a legal issue as opposed to just a simple, oh, the border corporate is going to cover this. So having a fundamental understanding of what the legislation is, how to best resolve it, where to go for a quick resolution is increasingly becoming so important. So do you see sort of the rise of the consultants when it comes to the sectional title community sort of, um, you know, increasing, um, as it were? I mean, I know there are quite a few now that are on the rise, but I feel as though more and more you essentially need them as opposed to it being a nice to have service. Hmm. So in my experience, and I've seen it, trustees are, are, have full-time jobs. So most of the time we have our meetings after hours, number one, and generally they only, you know, we struggle with, with getting communication from them on email because they are busy. They don't have, they don't have time to uh, effectively assist the managing agent with the, man with the running of the body corporate. The role of a professional trustee or a uh, consultant or an executive managing agent is, is very important because with the introduction of the sectional title legislation a few years back and now with Poppy, the role of a trustee is becoming more and more important because you are, you know, in essence, trustee is trust. Owners are putting trust in you to effectively manage a scheme. So the role of someone who has the know-how, who has the time, who has the expertise and the experience to effectively run a body corporate is very important. You know, we spend lots of money in purchasing sectional title units and we want that peace of mind that the body corporate is compliant uh, in terms of their risk financially, um, in all aspects. We want that um, peace of mind. So it is very important that you get someone who you are comfortable with and who has the know-how and the expertise to manage uh, the compliance and risk aspects of a body corporate. You there? Yes, apologies okay. there. And as you were saying? Um, so like I just mentioned, you know, the importance of having someone who has the know-how, expertise, knowledge, experience is very important because with the rise of sectional title legislation in 2016 and now with Poppy, 
the role of a trustee is more and more important because there is so much, and a managing agent, there is so much uh, compliance and, you know, boxes to tick for a body corporate that it is, it is almost vital that you get someone involved that can assist you and guide you uh, besides your managing agent. Someone with, you know, even a legal background. Um, I've worked with Zalinda on a, few, on a few body corporate matters and just having that extra experience, expertise really, really helps to make sure that you are um, complying with, with legislation or with any other matter that um, the body corporate is unsure about and needs an extra person to assist. We are taking your questions and comments on the Private Property Podcast as we talk about uh, the Poppy Act uh, when it comes to sectional title communities. On Facebook, we've got Glad Sharinda asking, what effect will it have to estate agents who are still using a traditional method of, of cold calling when looking for stock? And we see that quite a lot in the end. I mean, I get a lot of calls, uh, you know, mm. when you own a particular property, they have access to your information and they'll call you to find out whether you're selling and if you're, you know, looking to rent it out. Sometimes they want to do a free evaluation. You know, does it have an effect or will it have an effect on estate agents who typically do that? Most definitely, because a lot of the times agents who are owners in sectional title schemes have access to the information and they would then utilize it for that purpose, or they approach us to obtain the information so they can do the cold calling. Now, the Act specifically says the information processed must be for the purpose, a specific purpose, where it means to for the management of the scheme. So cold calling does not align with the purpose of managing a scheme. Therefore, they can't do it. And it will, it will, it will be seen as a breach. We've got another question. It's actually relatively similar. I think you've, you've partially answered it there. And this one is coming from Umata Shingange asking, is a managing agent allowed to share members' information with other owners? Uh, please pardon me if this has already been covered. So sharing yeah. up by the managing agent yeah. to other owners, are they allowed to do so? So Poppy says that you can, whatever you are doing, if it's lawful, you can do it. So in terms of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, you can provide information about from, for other, of other owners if you are doing it for a specific purpose. So if you are complying with the STSMA and in, in effect um, defying Poppy, you're permitted to do so. But again, for a specific purpose and for that purpose only. It mustn't be for anything untoward. It must be a reasonable request. So it is, it is permitted. Mm. You know, you know, Leanne, what I've typically found is when contact details have been shared or another owner's details uh, has been shared with me has been in the event of chopping one of the properties is an issue downstairs and there has to be a way that we must try and resolve it. We'll share each other's contact details and vice versa. Uh, but it's really for you know promotional purposes or something that hasn't that, that doesn't have to do with uh, we'll say the actual admin of whatever the issue that we are currently dealing with. I mean I know with one of the properties we had a we had a plumbing issue and they put all of us in one group uh, who are affected by that particular issue so we can try and find a you know a time when the plumber can come and sort it out so there have been those few instances where you know mm-hmm. contact details have been shared and typically the managing agent actually first asks if i'm okay with my contact details being shared with another owner uh, so that we are able to find a way to resolve uh, something quickly because you often don't want to go knocking on somebody's door in as much as they may literally be next door or just below you. Um, but, you know, Leanne, before I let you go this evening, any final tips for our viewers at home who many of them are either, you know, renting in a sectional title, but certainly also have bought into a sectional title. Uh, what should we almost be the big takeaway from this conversation, especially when we look at how we're going to go to our managing agent uh, to figure out what what they're going to be doing in 
order to ensure that we're compliant. Any for our viewers at home? So I think the most important to take from this is that one July isn't that far off. And people think, no, we, you know, last year they thought, okay, we've got a year, it's fine. You, we're now on the 1st of March. We've got four months. Um, another thing to take away from this is the information regulator must receive registration of the information officer by the end of March, which is in 30 days. So I think it's very important that body corporate start with their compliance now as opposed to later and that they approach the managing agent, approach someone external and get them to start and get, get an analysis going as to how they're going to become compliant. to episode 210 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamantungwa Kumalo. Well, it is on a Monday and certainly the first uh, of March. If you don't have a few technical glitches, uh, I feel as though the Gremlins are slightly jealous of the amazing streak that we have had. So we're going to blame it on Monday Blues as well as a new month Blues. Now that that's out of the way, uh, Leanne, thank you so much for you know shedding light on this particular one, and, and, and I'm sure that a lot of viewers have certainly found it quite insightful. One of the things that you were saying is we should definitely use services of you know consultants or explore using services of consultants and if sometimes it's not even you know to be a trustee but certainly look at the training aspect uh, where they work with trustees in order to best yeah. equip them to deal with some of the decisions that they need to make most definitely training compliance and start tomorrow and that's definitely a great note to leave it there leanne thank you so much for joining us this evening thanks so much Shama. thanks everyone for joining and listening and that is Leanne Harrison, who is a portfolio manager at Pam Golding Property Management Services. Well, that brings to an end the Monday edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Zamandunga Kumalo. It's been a bumpy road, uh, but now that the bumpy road is done and it's out of the way, I'm sure that it's going to be an incredible month ahead. And we're going to be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Until then, hoping you're staying home and staying safe.
I'm Rick Nedling. I'm an Olympic gold medalist and shareholder and marketing director of Aldevia Estate, which recently acquired Pearl Valley Estate. I've been living in the beautiful Paul Frontrick Valley for the last five years. We are situated right in the heart of the Cape Winelands. Security is our number one priority and it's something we work on every day. And this has earned us the reputation of being the safest estate in Africa. But the lifestyle that this area has to offer truly is country living at its best. We're just five minutes away from the historic town of Paul. Paul really is an incredible area to explore, with little gems like the Spice Root and Fairview Farms. But the biggest attraction is the excellent schools. Franchuk, on the other hand, is a major international tourist destination, and also known as the culinary capital of South Africa, with a diverse offering for every palate and occasion. Our recent acquisition of Pearl Valley is a major game changer for us. Our residents can now enjoy a wide range of amenities unmatched anywhere else in the world. There's the world-famous Jack Nicklaus Signature Golf Course, which is consistently ranked among the top golf courses in South Africa. And there are some beautiful properties on the course. Polder V really is the ideal family environment. We also cater to equestrian lovers with facilities on offer for every discipline, from the two Hurlingham Standard Polar Fields to our state-of-the-art equestrian centers and miles of trails. Our horses live in paradise too. Poldevi has its own wine farm and cellars, producing award-winning wines, which every resident can be proud of. I've been blessed to travel the world, but this is the place I come home to. I'm sure you can see why we call it the Valley of Life. And this is my neighborhood. <laughs>